science. A world of incomprehensible theories and nerds, of never-ending equations and words with more syllables that can be counted on your hand. But it holds the answers, the beauty, and the manual of our entire universe. Yet many of us foresee this beauty because we've turned it into an enigmatic code. But it doesn't have to be this way. It can be easy and intuitive. And it can even be used to answer one of the most esoteric questions that we've asked ourselves at one point in our lives. What is the meaning of life? And with a bit of science, you'll see that its answer is just as beautiful as its simplicity. To answer such an arcane question, we must first look at one of the most fundamental realities that we know, entropy. It is a theory that the entire universe as a whole moved towards disorder or a state of higher chaos. State of higher chaos. Now, it is one of the most fundamental parts of physics. It is what gives time a direction. It is what makes us exist and what makes the ice caps melt. But this is where the discontent and disconnection between science and our understanding appears. If re all reality does is move towards disorder, how did something as ordered and as beautiful as a human being come about? Think about it. From the processes we complete to the systems we have, aren't we intricately organized? What does that mean about our existence? Let's look at entropy a bit differently. The disorder in the universe as a whole has to increase, right? But what if there could be regions of lower disorder? We'll look at it from a different perspective, through a phenomenon that we experience here in Sri Lanka, cyclones. In a cyclone, you have this massive region of high-speed high winds and disorder. But then in its center is an area of order and calm and stillness. And that's exactly how to think of entropy. And in these regions of low entropy, ordered life, like ourselves, exist. This is the work of Stefan Alexander, a theoretical physicist at Brown's University. And this principle was given a name the entropocentric principle. And he thought of it as little biospheres, little low entropy biospheres where life can exist through a set of biological and geological reactions. But then that raises even more questions. Why? Why would the universe go out of its way to create essentially a loophole in a fundamental law just for life to exist? What does that mean about our existence? What does it hold for us? If we are ordered, and if reality and the universe as a whole moves towards disorder, it could only mean one thing, that we help in that production of disorder. Now, you don't have to go far back in time to see this connection. Look at our evolution. We were born into a planet that was simple, and organized and ordered. That's before we congregated into civilizations. We dug up the limestone from the ground and turned it into the pyramids of Giza. We sculpted out the marble and formed the Taj Mahal. And then afterwards, we mixed sand and cement and gravel and made the Colosseum. We've taken an ordered planet and made it into so many forms of disorder. What about all the inventions that we have encountered across our evolution? From the printing press to the steam engine, aren't they all just creating more and more disorder in our world? And look at civilization now. Metals that were once part of the earth are now skyscrapers. Crude oil, roads, water turned into energy, and rubber into tires. We've taken a simple, simple orderedness that we were born into, and we've created it into many, many different forms of disorder. Now, why should we care? 
What does it mean for us? And most importantly, what does it mean in our existence? I believe, personally, that the danger lies in ignoring these questions. We often find ourselves living the same boring, ordered, repetitive life every day. We wake up the same time, we eat the same breakfast, we, do, we wear the same clothes and we go to work or school and perform the same repetitive task before coming back home and turning on that same television program, before turning on the alarm to do it all again the next day. We've forged a lifestyle that goes against everything we were born to do. We weren't meant for boringness or order. We were meant to create disorder, to go out and to be creative, to go explore the ends of the earth, to build unorthodox structures. That's what we are meant to do. It's poetic. We, are, we were born disordered to be disorderly. A simple answer to our toughest question. And a personalized answer in that, because science has given all of us a unique way of being disorderly. And that's how we should approach thinking about science, by looking at it through the view of the most fundamental questions we pose to ourselves as humans. So the next time you ask yourself, what is the meaning of my life? Accept it positively. Think of it as science's calling, knocking on the door of your conscious, asking you whether you are actually paying your dues in being disorderly. We are not a drop in the ocean, rather the entire ocean in a drop. And what science entails for us is to take that drop and turn it into an ocean of disorder. Thank you. <laughs>